Johnny Warfin, another spotlight interview from the 2024 Merida High School Athletic Hall of Fame. And we feature from the class of 1963, the late uh, Bill Wetzel and William Burke Wetzel officially. But we have his his youngest son, Andrew, uh, to talk a little bit. I know we we're going to do this last year and, and that untimely passing of, of your dad. But, man, I've got such great memories, probably very differently than you. And I think that's why I'm looking forward to this this interview more than anything else. I'd, I'd start, um, Andrew, about the the guy, your dad plays basketball, football, golf, baseball, track. It's crazy in 2024 to think that guys were doing all that stuff. Did you get, where did you fall in terms of getting some of that talent? <laughs> That's funny. I, when when you send me the list, you know, you really do hear mostly about the base or uh, of the basketball and the football stuff. Right. But then when you see in today's day and age, there, there's no way that people could play two sports in each season as he did uh, and earn, you know, letters in multiple sports. You know, he must have been doing two sports in the fall and two sports in the spring, the way it looks as yeah. last couple of years of high school. And that just doesn't happen anymore. And, and or, you know, earning 11 letters in four years or uh, is just incredible. You just can't see that anymore. Yeah, and part of a basketball team that, that goes 40 40- four and three or whatever this you know it's crazy and and coming off of the 60 class that was so good you know you you, you get all mm-hmm. these expectations and these guys just kept rolling yeah and the the team is it was so united too because i know they had a couple of injuries that that might have set them back i think uh from talking to a lot of the guys and and uh they just they stayed at it for two seasons and went deep into the playoff runs such as it was back in the 60s and and to only lose three games in a couple of years is still just an amazing accomplishment Andy you would appreciate and, and certainly share with with your mom and, and family as well that you know I get like the Doug Robinson's the guys that grew up with with Bill and then the mm-hmm. relationship that he had with my dad and, and I had yeah. Ken Stoller up here talking about so you get all these different memories of you know bill wetzel from back mm-hmm. in the day and before you really even came along uh, from that perspective but give me the the growing up part of it because you guys went away and and talk a little yeah. bit about some of the the latter part of of that from a from a dad or a son standpoint sure uh yeah that that group was tight knit for so many years you know guys like doug robinson and, and other other players that were involved in those few years of high school there um you know doug robinson is still such a close friend uh part of the wetzel family to be honest with you and you know it's just uh growing up in marietta and and i still think is as it as my home but you know we, my, my dad's job took us a few places and and i look back and i i see all those accomplishments on on the courts and the fields and such and i go man maybe it was a good thing i didn't go to marietta high school it would have been some large shoes to fill trying <laughs> i think i could have got them i think i could have got them in the golf part of it because that's that's what i did for so many years but uh, all the rest of it was was certainly something that would have been difficult to uh to live up to those expectations because uh, he just set a standard that uh, i just don't see very often yeah so i've got a, a dozen years or so on you andy and and mm-hmm. for perspective and again for our listeners we're talking to andy wetzel youngest son of of a Merida high school athletic hall of famer uh, bill wetzel going into the induction on the 28th of, of september but what i remember is uh, your dad was my dad's golf partner they played at lakeside <laughs> and uh you know those were the, the and then the other thing um was Sundays at Sutton Gym here, which is our high school gym, was yeah. uh, the beer leagues, they called it, and there was uh-huh. a bar. My dad coached, and yes. your dad <laughs> and, and these guys that played on his team, they were like pro. It just felt like you're watching the, the NBA as a kid growing up, you know, just being yeah. down there on Sundays. Uh, but those guys yeah. could roll. those guys could roll before, during, and after the game. Yeah, I, I I think that when you just mentioned timeout bar, that that brought brought back some memories that uh, I, I hadn't remembered for a long time. Because I I think when Dad came back after playing 
basketball at Marshall for two and a half years or whatever it was and, and getting injured and couldn't play basketball anymore. I think he was working part-time at the timeout bar while he was finishing school and, and playing in that basketball league with everybody. So I think he was he – was, uh, going to school, finishing up at Marietta College and, and working at the bar, if I remember correctly, and, and those leagues were, were were the best of the best out there, probably probably uh, four or five years older than the other guys playing in it, but they, they probably uh, dominated that league. So, <laughs> Oh, that yeah, so much, so much fun to think about that. We're going to take a quick break, a uh, Hall of Fame spotlight interview. In this particular interview, Andy Wetzel, son of the late – uh, Bill Wetzel going into the Hall of Fame this year for Merida High School from the graduating class of 1963. We'll be back uh, and talk a little more with son Andy after this timeout. Johnny Worf and, and again back with Andy Wetzel um, talking about Hall of Famer Bill Wetzel, his father. And um, in terms of um, did you actually get, I mean, would you get on the court or on the? did you get a golf with him? I think that's one of the great things about golf. You can just keep playing. Yeah. Did you do that much with him? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my older brother, Doug and I, uh, we had a, you know, we had a golf club in our hand when we were five years old. Uh, you know, obviously that had a lot to do with, uh, uh, Bill senior. My grandfather was a golf coach at the college in Marietta for, for 40 plus years. Um, and so we all grew up playing golf. My dad's younger brother, Bob, you know, uh, and then, to talk about the team that st- stayed so close for all these years after the early sixties, you know, I, I, we've gone on golf trips with Doug Robinson and, and some others uh, every year we had a chance. I mean, golf just brings everybody together and you play it your whole life. And, and uh, my grandfather for, uh, fortunately instilled that in about everybody in the family that wanted to play. I, I worked in the golf business for 12 years after college and, and uh, played some golf. Uh, you know, obviously through high school and college, but, uh, yeah, that's a sport that, that really, really, you can, you can live a lifetime playing, but, uh, you know, my dad was, you know, I think basketball was his true love, especially growing up, but that, that again goes back to my grandfather. Uh, you know, he coached the basketball team through the fifties, uh, there at Marietta college and had some unbelievable teams, the firehouse five or, or, or what, uh, you know, he had so much success, and I think my dad just grew up in the gymnasium over there in the old field house with my grandfather, and, and basketball just was, was his number one love. Um, I, I recall talking with my dad and grandfather when I was in high school or younger, and, you know, he, he probably could have played basketball anywhere when he got out of Marietta High School with, with opportunities to play basketball, and many don't know he had three great college football programs come and try and get him to go play football but he always leaned back to basketball because i think basketball and golf were just instilled with with my grandfather uh for all those years yeah before he got injured i think he put through down 55 points in a game for yeah. for marshall yeah. um and i want to yeah. ask you about the 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 grandfather father son um mm-hmm. relationship but just for the listeners i want to remind him since you continue to bring up these guys that are so close that class in 1963 Mm -hmm. it was an undefeated 22 and 0 i think they went before they lost in a in a district tournament so they Mm -hmm. go undefeated um and then in the two years i mentioned they're 44 and 3 and a Mm -hmm. fellow hall of famer bill warden also i think doug robinson were, were part of that and and helped uh put together some of this information for uh, yeah. the induction for for your dad. Um, but did you think, since you mentioned, man, if you'd have played in Marietta, you'd have had big shoes to fill. Do you think <laughs> your dad, you think your dad ever felt that about his dad with, with all those accomplishments as well? Or did he ever bring that up? You know, I, I, I asked him that, uh, you know, a few times, you know, was there, you know, uh, growing up, you know, through the late fifties as a, early teen teenager into high school, you know, watching all that success that, that my grandfather was having at the college. I would assume it did, but man, it never, it never came up with him that it was something that bothered him or, or was something in the back of his mind. I just think, uh, I just think it gave him an opportunity to, to be so skilled at playing basketball because he was, he was a gym rat, you know, like they say in the day, he must've been in that gymnasium, 
all the time probably uh, with my grandfather. But, uh, yeah, you know, small town, you know, you, you might have, feel some pressures to, to, to exceed in something like that, but my dad never, never even brought it up. That's fantastic. Andy, I want to yeah. thank you um, not just for, for stepping up and doing this interview mm-hmm. with me, but uh, taking me back and our listeners back, me personally back to those Sunday Sundays <laughs> in the Time Out Bar uh, <laughs> uh, team. I, I, I'm sitting here in my head thinking about these um, – you know, scarlet and gray, short, short basketball shorts with stripes on them. <laughs> the, and, short shorts. And, the short shorts. <laughs> and the short shorts. And those boys just rolling, man, elbows uh, flying. And, and basketball, the way it, you know, the way it was, man, I could start naming names, but it, all the yeah. different uh, guys that played. But uh, so much fun it, to, to hear the stories, yeah. and I appreciate it, your perspective. It, yeah. It is funny you mentioned the, the success of Marshall before the injury, you know, and I think that was something he was really proud of uh, because, you know, in the early 60s, a freshman couldn't play on varsity basketball or any sport, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, he, he was he was always pretty proud of going over there as a freshman but playing on the JV because that's as high as they could go back then. But that old field house over there, he put 55 up in a game, and I don't think anybody ever broke that record until they stopped yeah. playing in the field house and, and changed it. So, you know, I, I always, I always jabbed him a little bit about that. You know, how'd you do that without a three point line back then, you know, but, uh, that was something he was pretty proud of. And unfortunately he couldn't finish out all four years with some injuries, but, uh, Hey, you know, he was a true believer. Everything happens for a reason. And, and, uh, went back to Marietta and finished school and, and, and lived a phenomenal life. Final thought, Andy. Um, as and I know a lot of his teammates and, and those guys I've, I've talked to around here, but you guys have been fairly removed from from this area. So I was wondering about the induction ceremony. Who might come back? Who might um, accept and and uh, you know be the presenter on that Saturday night? Yeah, I um, I think my wife and I are are, are going to be down. Uh, I think Pam Stefanik and her family. Are going to be down. Uh, uh, are going to be there because they live locally. Uh, I don't think his brother Bob and his wife are going to be able to make it up. And and I I, I don't know about uh, his other sister Linda because he was the oldest of the four. There was Bill, Bob, Linda, and Pam. And uh, but uh, I also have my uh, my youngest son is a junior over at OU in Athens, and I'm hoping he'll come over. And I think he will. And my uh, oldest son just graduated, uh, got out of school. And uh, he's living here in Columbus. So it might be my wife and the two boys and then probably Pam's family, at least. And I, I spoke with Doug, and I think Doug's going to uh, be there with a couple of the other guys that are uh, uh, from the group there, from, from those teams. And, and so it, it, it'll be Doug or myself or, or a combination of both that will be down to accept the honor and, 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 and honor my dad in, in, in the right way. Yeah, it's pretty usual for me here. I asked her for five or ten minutes and talked for fifteen. So I appreciate, yeah. I appreciate <laughs> well, <can> that. <laughs> That's fine. And uh, so thanks so much. And I'm glad you brought up Pam because I always think Tigers when I think of of Pam Wetzel Stefanik, yeah. uh, just the, from the cheerleading days and the Tavi days. Yeah. And man, just just bleed the orange and black in my mind uh, back then yeah. uh, growing up. So appreciate that as well. Thank you for your time. Congratulations on behalf of of your dad and, and the Hall of Fame committee here. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate everything. See Andy you down Wetzel. there. All right. Alrighty. Andy Wetzel, our guest, uh, and we honor uh, William Bill Wetzel from the class of 1963.